it's Jess here from Jesus Wide, and I am here with Thomas Muglia. Did I say your last name right? That is acceptable. Uh, okay, there's there's like three different ways to say it. How do you say it? My family says Mulia. Mulia. Where the G is silent. Mulia. Okay. Thomas Mulia, everybody. But if we were to look you up on Instagram, what is your Instagram handle? It's Thomas.Mulia. Okay, and how do you spell that? M-U-G-L-I-A. There we go. Okay. Thank you. I'm on the right track now. So Thomas Mulia, it is so nice to meet you. Um, you released a record just a week ago now when we're chatting. Um, but for people who have never met you before, who is Thomas Mulia in your own words? Well, Thomas Mulia is a guy from Tempe, Arizona. Um, and I love to hang out with my family. I love to hang out with my roommates. I have some great roommates. And I love writing songs, sitting on the porch. The weather's always wonderful in Arizona. So I like to sit out there with my guitar and play and write songs. Perfect. I can picture it as well. I'm like, yes. In my mind, because Arizona is purely the Grand Canyon, the Grand Canyon's in the back while you're doing that, <laughs> yeah. even though that's completely <laughs> No. It's a little, it's a little more colorful where I am, but, but yes, that works. Thank you for allowing me just to be an Australian tourist in that moment. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, so I want to ask you about your album, but before I get to that point, because there'll be a lot of people meeting you for the first time, like me, who maybe, maybe recognize your face from American Idol some years back. So can you tell me? how you got to this point in your career because you just have released a worship record called i have a father but my understanding is you weren't always set out to be a christian or even a worship recording artist so how did you get to this point right yeah it's um i i definitely started out as a pop artist um i used to i i really started as a kid i started playing guitar probably in third grade and my dad was a Christian, he was a Catholic singer songwriter. Um, and so he was doing Christian music and my mom was a music teacher. And so music in my house was always just the thing to do. And so I was born into that, but I, while I was around church music a lot, um, I, my thing was always like, well, I love, at the time I was in like third grade, I was like, the Jonas Brothers are just awesome. Yes. And I would learn those songs and yeah. then, <laughs> and then as I got older, it started to become Ed Sheeran and then John Mayer. And that was just the kind of thing that I wanted to do. So I was learning those songs on the guitar and playing them at talent shows and then coffee shops. And eventually I tried out for American Idol yeah. and I made it on to the show and got cut actually pretty quickly. It was when they cut the cast down to, I don't remember the exact number. It was like 50 or 70 that's, or something like that's that. That's still pretty phenomenal to even make it to that point. That's huge. It was really fun. It was really fun. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And um, yeah, that was, that was how I started learning how to sing and how to write. Love it. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget. Again. So yeah. you released I Have a Father on OCP. Yes. Um, so this and this is your first release on their on like their label or with them. Um, you previously released another worship record before this independently, is that right? Yes. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that one was called The Return. The Return, okay. So what has happened between The Return, which you released independently, to I have a father. That's a good question. I I, I feel like I, I glossed over when you asked what happened between American Idol and 
the worship music too. But um, in college, I got involved in a great campus ministry called St. Paul's Outreach. And it was just a really amazing time. I, I was living with eight to 10 other guys that were my age and Catholic. And we really just tried to walk the walk. And there was a, a lot of encouragement to pray every day and to be open about where I was at with my brothers and in the house there. And through that, um, we really, we did a lot of worship together. Um, we prayed a lot together. And that was when I started to really invest my musical energy into my faith life. And those first seven songs on The Return, um, I wrote those because we were doing so much worship in St. Paul's Outreach. And there was a part of me that was like, well, hey, I could, I could write some of those too because I had really started to, to get into my faith and have a daily prayer life. And um, I started writing and learning how to write better. And that was kind of my first experience writing music for um, praying and worshiping too. And I took the best seven and recorded them just in my dad's studio. My dad has a studio and because he has been doing music too. So I did them there with some friends. And then between that first album and, and this new album was a three and a half year period of very intense songwriting and just walking, walking through the Christian faith and growing and maturing. And um, This new album is really just a snapshot of that life that I lived in college. Yeah, that's really cool. I love it. So the album is I Have a Father. You've touched a yes. little bit on sort of what inspired that, the period leading up. But can you tell us about I Have a Father? What What is it that makes you so proud of this record? How does it represent you? It really is. Um, it's a collection of my my thoughts, my conversations with God. Um, every song is kind of a, a checkpoint in the journey so far. Um, so that first record was really like, Hey, I'm an, I'm a new Christian. I, I've always been, you know, raised in the faith, but mm -hmm. there comes a point when you really choose to follow Christ. Yeah. Um, and so that first record was like, Hey, I'm, I'm a new Christian and I love to just write worship music. And it was kind of like, here's what I have, here's what I have. Yeah. And the second one, and all of these 11 songs on I Have a Father is really, um, as God started to sort of shape my heart, and I really started to follow after him and take up a daily prayer life and listen to his word, um, there were different like peaks and valleys on that journey that I went through. And it's, it's almost like there's a song for everyone. And that's kind of where these 11 are. So it's, it's very personal. Um, it's very much conversational between me and God. Mm -hmm. And I just think of this album as really a, a snapshot of yeah. the past three years in campus ministry. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I love that it's, well, it's, it's personal, but like from your, your thoughts, your prayers, because that means even though it's really unique to you, so many people will relate to it. They'll be like, oh, this is that part of the journey. I've been there. I'm not alone in that. I think that's really beautiful. That's when, and I, I mean, I think that's what Christian music needs. So that's just me, but <laughs> I love that. That's really good. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, that really is, that really is the hope is that mm -hmm. somebody else who's kind of at that spot or maybe not yet can hear a song and say, oh, that's, that's me right now. Yeah. So I ask artists a lot, what is your favorite track? And I've heard it's like choosing a child. So today, what what track on the album stands out to you? What's your favorite track today? My favorite track today is Let My Tongue Be Silenced. And it's it's definitely a contender for, for the favorite child, as it were. Um, <laughs> it's it's a contender. It's up there. And the reason is I it, in my journey, I've really had to just surrender repeatedly to God. And it's, it's not a one-time thing. It's, it's, it's a daily thing. And the more I sing about him, the more I hope that I can 
surrender to him. And so that song is, is a really special one to me. Yeah, that's really, really cool. How has God surprised you, even in the last week since you've released this album? How has God surprised you? Well, I will say I thought that this, this has been a huge surprise, the whole thing. I, I thought that these songs were going to get recorded in my dad's studio again or in my bedroom. And last September, so a little over a year ago, I started to show songs to OCP, the publisher, and they they listened to them. And I still kind of thought like, OK, I'm just going to record these on my own and maybe there will be a publishing deal or something. They ended up hearing the songs and sending me to Nashville to yes. record in a beautiful, beautiful studio. Mm-hmm. Um, and Paul Moak produced the record okay. and he's an amazing producer. And it was just like so much fun. I got to take one of my best friends out there with me, who's also a musician. So that was a huge surprise. And then seeing how people have received the the music has been surprising as well. I, I think I, I don't know. I don't really know how I thought people would receive it, but it's been received really well. And, and I did an album release last uh, Saturday, so just a few days ago. And we ended up selling out two yes. concerts, which was just mind blowing to me. I don't, yeah. I don't know how it happened. But yeah, it's been really surprising. It's been been very cool to, to put these songs out and just see people praying with them and listening to them. That's so good. on your backgrounds um, and the fact like you grew up in the church, you grew up with a parent in Christian music, um, essentially. Um, But as I was reading through your presser, I was really struck by how it really highlighted that there was a time in your life when you went from following God out of obligation to actually like knowing God and and, like choosing like to, to pray, to like pursue him in so many different ways. Can you tell me, how that place went from, if I can call it like a more nominal faith to a really personal faith? Yeah. Yeah. I um, always believed in God. I would even say I always had a relationship with God. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we've heard like people say, you need to go from religion to relationship. And I even think for me, I, I needed to go a, a step farther than that, where I always had a relationship with God, but it wasn't until recently that I had a friendship with God. I love that. And so cool. it really, um, I, I spent most of my childhood kind of just trying to stay out of trouble. Um, I went to a youth group. I went to a Catholic school and grew up in the church. And like I said, there, there comes a point where you really have to, to choose. Am I going to follow Christ or am I going to follow something else? And... For me, I was a little bit of a perfectionist. I, I really would force myself to just follow rules and I was yeah. hard on myself when I would mess up. And when I went to college, I joined this amazing campus ministry just kind of because I was like, well, this is the thing to do now. I'm going to college and I moved out of my parents' house and started a life on my own and through that, I began to ask a lot of questions and I also had these great guys in my life who were also trying to pursue God and 
it was during that time that I started to ask God, show me who you actually are. And I started to pray and read scripture. And I like to say that God took my legalistic and fear-driven heart and he turned it into the heart of a son. And so through that, my, uh, my worldview began to shift from I have a religion to I have a father, which is the name of this album. So Yeah, I, um, I really relate to the growing up in a Christian family, but also really struggling with being driven by religion and fear. Um, Mm -hmm. and that I think it's incredible that you're sharing that journey with people because that's really vulnerable. How do you, hang on, let me backtrack. So in my experience, like having, it's, we're like really close with God now, but those mindsets and those habits, like a legalism of it. And for me, like a lot of shame is still there. And I frequently have to unravel that and be like, no, this is the point. This is where Jesus is. Do you have to work through like those type of things daily still or have you come to a place where it feels, I don't know if more natural is the best way to say it, but there's a more there's an, an ease to how you engage with God now because you don't have to tick all the boxes to get there? Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's, there's an ease and a rhythm yeah. and, and a friendship there that God has really become approachable to me now That's so cool. um, and and obviously there's always going to be remnants and mm-hmm. and scars from the past but like god is god is all about healing and restoring and so i don't think anyone who honestly comes to him is is not going to be restored From belief that I can't be loved From fear that I'm not good enough From false security I have what it takes From the fear that my trust in you Would lead me to somewhere more destined from my resistance to childlike dependence on you Deliver me, Jesus You were, you were born with some hearing loss, which I know you talk about a bit in your presser, so it's part of your journey that you've been open with. Um, how has that shaped your sensitivity to like creating music, loving music, creating something that people feel? Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. My hearing loss really it's it's normal to me. I I was born with it and I I don't know anything other than what I know hearing wise. Um so really I I don't know if it has affected me maybe it would be a little different if it's like at one point I wasn't hearing impaired and then I became hearing impaired Mm -hmm. but my journey has always been the same I've I've always had hearing aids Um, so I always say that it doesn't really affect me musically Um, but that's not to to say that it's nothing obviously if I take my hearing aids out I cannot communicate at all Um, so it's a pretty serious hearing loss and I've had moments where I've had to take one out for a while because I'll get like an ear infection or something weird or the the hearing aid breaks or something and um, it's a struggle to play then Mm -hmm. but for the most part it's just my normal and I don't know if it's really impacted my musicianship very much yeah this is an off-the-cuff question so if you don't want to answer it you don't have to I can cut it has has like growing up and being born with hearing loss has that challenged your face like where god is in that at all not at all no i i've never um i've never been upset about it i've never been down about it Mm -hmm. um 
it's pretty interesting. My sister Marianne has the same, a very similar hearing loss to myself um, for a completely different reason. And we've always been just able to relate to each other in that way. We've always been very close. I don't know how different my mindset would be if I didn't have her. Um, but for the most part, it's always just been a part of my story. And, you know, every now and then I enjoy turning off my hearing aids on an airplane and <laughs> reading a book in silence. Yeah. So. Yeah. He gave me strength when strength was gone. for me